I went to Kamloops to dig up some dirt on a man named Bill Miner. He was a big, tall man, prominent mustache, easily passed as a southern gentleman, would step in and give a sermon if the minister was ill, friend to one and all, but also one of the most notorious train and stagecoach robbers of Western North America. He was born in Kentucky in 1847. He kind of had a bit of a botched train robbery down in the States, so he fled to British Columbia where he kept uh, plying his trade. <laughs> uh, it's in the middle of urbanization. Vancouver's building its skyscrapers, and yet here's somebody who represents the Wild West. Browning's patent Colt. Yeah. So this is Bill's. That is Bill's. He was always seen having at least two pistols on him at all times. Oh, it has the, it has the quick... Yeah. Choo. We like to say that he was so polite, he had to come to Canada to rob trains and banks, and his nickname was the Gentleman Bandit. He was known for his trademark phrase, hands up, if you cooperate, I won't harm a hair on your head. <laughs> Give him hands up. Hands up. Yeah. So momentarily, you'll be out of here in no time. Don't you worry. And he did have an accent, so you probably... Did I nail that accent? Oh, yeah. Probably not. <laughs> On the night of May 8th, 1906, a train with over $100,000 in gold and registered mail was assailed by three bandits. A man who was using the assumed name of George Edwards and his two friends, Shorty Dunn was one of them, and Louis Colcoon was the other. George Edwards is the alias Bill Miner used here. They're going to rob the Transcontinental at a place called Ducks Station. Nowadays, it's called Monty Creek. If you look down the uh, river and down the, the highway and the tracks there, you'll see a place where the hydro lines cross the river, and it's uh, known as Billy Miner's Rock. So they use that elevated height to hop on the train. They get on board, they control the engineer, bring the train to a stop. They're not very good at it, actually. They disengage the passenger cars, and they force the engineer to take the train down the tracks, where they rifle through the mail car. And what they hoped to find were a series of safes in what was called the express car. Unfortunately, they had left that car behind with the passenger cars. He was getting more and more frustrated as he wasn't finding the money. He saw they had these little pigeonholes that had mail in them. And when Bill Miner questioned it, he's like, oh, that's just ordinary mail. And Bill Miner was like, oh, OK. And the clerk was like, whew, because if he had actually looked through those envelopes, he would have got almost $35,000. Wow. He got $15.50 and a packet of liver pills. No way. That was it. With a $12,000 reward from the CPR, the hunt for the bandits was on. William Fernie, the town of Fernie, he's the police constable who sets out looking for them. He had made quite a few friends with the Shaquepam people, especially the Tecumpaloops band. He went right over to the reserve because he knew they were the best trackers. And I think that was a huge turning point in this manhunt. How long was it from the robbery to when they got caught? Six days. Six days. They're tracked down while they're having lunch and arrested. Brought to Kamloops for the trial, and it's a, quite a big show trial. He still maintained he was George Edwards, he was not Bill Miner, but he had a very distinct tattoo on his left thumb, and he had a dancing girl on his forearm. And that's inevitably what his downfall was. They became almost instant folk heroes. So there was a lot of popular resentment against the railway. It's summarized by the saying that was popular at the time that Bill Miner robs the CPR once or twice uh, a year, but the CPR robs us every day. <laughs> People in Kamloops came out to applaud them. They brought them cigars. They all got life sentences with no chance of parole for 25 years. Within 13 months, Bill Miner had tunneled out of the pen in New Westminster and had escaped and headed back south of the border. Bill Miner had a history in California of escaping from prison. So that was just kind of his style. I often laugh that maybe he should be known for breaking out of jails rather than for train robbing because really? he was very good at breaking out of prison. He only served a year here yeah. for, yeah. and gone. I think it's worth noting that he was sort of this, you know, like I said, New World anti-hero who got away with none of his crimes. By the time he was 55 years of age, he spent 33 years in jail. Bill died in the Georgia State Penitentiary in 1913, but only after one final escape. He was hiding out in a swamp, swallowed some of that lovely swamp water, and actually got gastritis. And he succumbed to that and no died way. in prison. Yeah, that's what killed Bill Miner, was gastritis. <laughs> 